Hi everyone, I'm Dr. Audrey Wells, a board certified sleep medicine physician. We don't often think women have a unique experience of sleep, but that's not true. We have an emotional experience to sleep that is important to discuss. In my clinical background, this lies at the heart of many sleep problems that women face. What do I mean? Women have social and cultural conditioning that create invisible mental burdens and corresponding emotions that compete with sleep. Women care deeply about their career ambitions and they handle job-related stress in ways that interfere with rest. Women are also the CEO of their home with multiple caregiving responsibilities, household obligations, and domestic labor activities that require vigilance, determination, and high levels of productivity. As a result, a woman's sleep is vulnerable since these factors can cause her to sacrifice sleep time or interfere with getting to sleep and staying asleep. I'll give you a couple of examples of things that I have seen frequently among women in my practice. I can't count the number of times an exhausted woman has said to me, I can't turn my brain off at night. I've experienced this too. Sometimes I'm so busy during the day that I have no white space, no time to process emotions or deal with stress. As a result, worries and stressors bubble to the surface of my thoughts at night when it's quiet and I'm alone in the dark. If you experience this, you may also start ruminating on all the things you should do, all the conversations that are replaying in your head about what you should or should not have said. Now notice when you're shooting all over yourself. You might see that your brain has a tendency to go to the past or to the future when you've got the nighttime monkey mind. The thoughts that you're having create emotions and you're marinating in those emotions as you're lying there trying to sleep. For women with trouble getting shut eye, these emotions are incompatible with sleep initiation and they may also keep you awake in the middle of the night. I'll give you a framework for thinking about this and maybe it will help you to start to turn things around. When you're having persistent thoughts or ruminations, they tend to fall into one of three categories, not enough, not safe, or not congruent. Let me take you through each one of these to see if something resonates for you. Not enough is a feeling of scarcity, often, there's not enough time to do all the things, or there's not enough money, or I'm not enough. This can be a form of imposter syndrome. Feeling not enough can lead to catastrophizing and insufficiency. And these feelings are simply incompatible with sleep. Your brain has a natural negativity bias at nighttime. And knowing this may help you to question the scary bedtime story of not enough. Not safe often looks like a form of anxiety, worrying, or feeling trapped. These are all fear-based emotions and often related to real or perceived threats to your health, your wealth, or your relationships. You might feel things like, if I leave my job to do what I really want to do, I may not be able to support myself. Or I'm pretty sure that weird stomach pain I keep having is gonna turn out to be cancer. Or if I confront my partner with what I really need, it may damage my relationship permanently. If you're having thoughts like this, it makes so much sense that you would not be able to sleep. You need to feel safe in order to relax and drop down into slumber. Then there's not congruent. This means that something is out of balance or out of alignment in your life. And you may say, sure, I have a job, but I'm burnt out and I'm yearning to do something that I'm actually passionate about. Or I value my health, but I'm not exercising or eating the way I want to. And I keep numbing out with social media and alcohol. Or I need some more alone time, but I keep taking care of everyone else and I don't have any time or any energy left over for the things I want to do. These types of internal dialogues highlight the imbalances in your life and on some level, you're conscious of it. And that comes up when you're alone in the dark with your thoughts. So given that we can feel things like scarcity, worry, a feeling of being trapped, overwhelmed, 
anxious or out of alignment, it's no wonder you can't sleep. Your mind after midnight is naturally programmed toward negativity, but you can deliberately turn things around. As always, the first step is awareness. You need to employ some emotional literacy and name it to tame it. Journaling can work wonders for a monkey mind as you're purging all of your bouncy thoughts out onto paper so your brain can feel seen and heard. And when you look at the thoughts that you've written down, you're reading them with the new part of your brain, your prefrontal cortex. And this part is rational and capable of reassuring the primitive emotional part of your brain that feels so reactive. As you practice this, you will not only feel like you're able to soothe yourself without medications or only being able to sleep when you're absolutely exhausted. What you'll do is start to move toward emotions that are more compatible with sleep. Consider emotions such as feeling capable, feeling gratitude, authenticity, willingness, abundance, and peace. If you're able to get your brain to be in the present, in the moment that you're lying in bed, you will realize that you are enough, you have enough, and you want so many things that you already have. There is nothing more to be done today. Everything is as it should be, and tomorrow is a brand new gift. It's time for sleep now, and you deserve it. Another thing that I hear a lot from women who can't sleep is, I can't relax. And what they're describing is more of a physical sensation of tension in their body. Oftentimes, this is around the eyes, tensing up the eye muscles, or clenching the jaw, or kind of clenching the shoulders. It may also present as a strain in the lower back or the hips or legs. This may go with restlessness or a perception that sleep is very light and interrupted throughout the night. I've had success with treating this as a nervous system overstimulation. In other words, you're still vigilant and carrying the emotional charge of your day in your body. You may have heard of the fight or flight nervous system, which is the sympathetic nervous system responsible for keeping us safe in the face of threats. Its opposite is the parasympathetic nervous system, also called rest and digest. So you want more rest and digest at bedtime and throughout the night. The rest part, I think, is pretty obviously compatible with sleep, but I also think digesting is applicable here. You're digesting or processing stress or even built up trauma, which is otherwise carried in our body. Treatment for this is a bottom-up approach instead of the top-down approach, which is what I described before. This means that you want to work at the level of your brainstem autonomic responses to dial back the nervous in your nervous system. One of the best ways to do this is with deep breathing techniques. Slow belly breaths, where you're regulating the pace of your breathing, the volume of your breathing, and preferentially taking air in and out through your nose. Doing a systematic body scan or even using progressive relaxation techniques, yoga, or simply stretching and being aware, giving special attention and care to your body before bed can also be effective. Applying cold to your upper face, gargling at night, humming, or even singing can stimulate your rest and digest nervous system. These practices are drug-free and side-effect-free and can help you get back to the wholesome, restorative, pleasurable experience of sleep, the way sleep was meant to be. It's my intention to elevate sleep as a critical component of your mental, emotional, and physical health. And any time investment you spend on improving your sleep is going to pay off and improve the health and well-being of your brain and body. Remember, the well-slept version of you is the best version of you, and you deserve that every single day. Thanks for watching. Have a great night.